So first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Most people think they're really good at this game because it isn't very hard. Many PvE games have this problem because you are supposed to win as a core part of the gameplay. So by design, you should not need to improve at them. And so the beginning step is just admitting that you could be better. And that's totally okay. Everybody could be better. Nobody's perfect. But typically when a game is as old as WoW, people did not get good at them all at once. They just improve a little bit here and there. And over like 20 years, they get to a really impressive place. But improvement feels good, it's fun, and I know you guys want to improve, so I'm going to shed some light in an otherwise pretty dark area, and hopefully make improving a little bit more efficient for you guys. This information doesn't just apply to Wrath of Lich King, it can be really any version of WoW. And the second step on this journey is trying to win instead of trying not to lose. Your level of skill is not like a problem to solve, it's more like a pizza that you can just keep adding toppings on indefinitely. Every topping is just a bonus on an otherwise complete pizza, and you should be hungry to add as many as possible. Now let's dig into the these topics. I'm going to talk about these fundamental concepts in this video. Uptime, positioning, resource management, and attention. And while these don't include everything, I can always make more videos in the future or make one for each of these. So let's get into uptime. Many people think that min-maxing your uptime is just going in the logs and looking at the active percentage number and making sure that number isn't a bad number. But people at the top of the rankings never really look at this. It's kind of just assumed that you aren't AFKing in the middle of the boss, but just like the pizza example, you aren't just filling a cup up with water and then once it's full, we're happy 100% uptime. It's more of a state of being. You should be hungry and greedy for as much dirty uptime as you can get your hands on. And that means creating more uptime than is obviously available for you to DPS the boss during any given encounter. Many people wait for the boss to be pulled and then start DPSing because they're not hungry for more uptime. What you want to do is literally pull the boss. It's gonna get pulled anyway, and so any advantage that you can give yourself like pre casting or having a spell in the air should be an absolute no-brainer. In my opinion, every DPS player should have the self-motivation to do as much damage as physically possible, and you should be figuring out the specifics in any given raid or boss because you're greedy for this uptime. It's very important. All right, moving on to positioning. So you might think this doesn't really matter for melee DPS, and the majority of the time that kind of can be the case, but as a melee, making a conscious effort to put attention into where you're standing can make a huge difference. For example, on Anubrakhan and Naxxramas, he always targets a player with the spike knockup thing, so you want to position yourself in a way where you won't be hit by somebody else's spike, even if that means attacking from an unconventional angle like the side of the boss. This is extremely fundamental because every raid has like a million examples of this, like Mimiron Fires, Razor Scale Fires, Freya Sunbeams, and Nature's Fury, just to name a few. And people usually don't even consider these things until it costs them DPS as a melee, and for range they usually stick to the script of whatever fight they're in, whether that be spread out or stack up but you should be thinking about what other people are doing in relation to your positioning, and if they mess up, how much will it cost you? Positioning is very closely related to uptime and movement, because you can use good positioning to avoid losing uptime or having to move more than necessary, which is something a lot of people don't really consider. It's common for people to have a plan for movement, like if I have to move, then I'll use life tap, that way I don't have to life tap whenever I'm not moving, but very rarely do they question if it was necessary for them to move at all. This is mostly because they're doing the same thing that everyone else in the raid is doing. If everybody's moving, then it's weird if I don't move, even if I don't have to. Okay, moving on to resource management. So this differs a lot from class to class, and I'm going to include your cooldowns, defensives, and your rotational stuff like energy or mana into resource management. And it can easily be the thing that you spend the most time focusing on. In fact, many people that play this game think it's the entire game, and that the only difference between a good player and a bad player is how well they manage their rotation, their cooldowns, or their resources, or something like that. However, I think their importance is vastly overvalued, and we very rarely take into account all of the resources and utility that we have available to us. Like, when's the last time you popped evasion? I do on every boss. And people think that you should devote a ton of time and effort and energy into these things in order to quote unquote make sure they don't do it wrong but in reality you should focus on these as little as possible just have a plan for them and then execute that plan and speaking of your focus that ties us into the last one attention your attention in my opinion is the most important out of all of these which nobody really talks about it's no secret that the best way to improve at any video game and many things in real life is to record yourself doing it and then review that recording but tons of people get this wrong as well they watch the recording and they look for mistakes but there's no new information here. You know if you made the mistakes or not because you're the one in the video. What you should be doing is asking yourself, what was I thinking about here? And then asking if your attention was placed as correctly as possible. Attention is a very finite resource and you shouldn't waste it. For example, when the frost bomb goes out on Memoron and you weren't paying attention and you died to it, what were you paying attention to? You shouldn't have to remember to pay attention. You should just pay attention when it actually happens. And while you're watching these recordings, you're gonna be really bored. It's not that exciting and you already know what happens. 
you want to feel as close to that during the fight as you can. Because when you're bored, you look for a place to put your attention, and then you can put it in the most valuable place, and then not die to the frost bomb. You want to make it as easy as possible for you to be bored when you're trying your best. In my opinion, that includes not even listening to music, because you don't want to waste attention thinking about the music. 99% of people don't do this because the game is supposed to be fun and they don't want to be bored while they're doing it, but when you're engaging in a performative act, your overall performance logically should be more important than momentary satisfaction. If it wasn't more important, then why are you doing the performative action at all, instead of doing something more gratifying? And you can always go do that gratifying stuff after the raid, and feel better knowing that you did your best in the moment and that you were actually paying attention the entire time. Depending on the intensity of the game, some pro gamers will even turn off their other monitors, or like in the case of League of Legends, run the game in a much lower resolution to make it easier to pay attention to beneficial things. Luckily in WoW, we can just make a weak aura for literally anything that requires our attention, and I highly recommend you do that as well. Streamers are regularly mocked and shamed by the higher-end community because they let their stream tax their attention away from their gameplay, and this can result in some pretty funny and silly mistakes. But let me know what you guys think of these kind of videos. I really love this topic, and I could make a hundred videos on this, but I want to make sure that it's providing value to you guys. Also, if you're having trouble implementing these and you want some extra help, I offer coaching from a link in the description, along with rested XP if you guys are going to level something, it helps out if you use my referral. But see you guys next time.